Recently, a viewer requested a video on how to reverse an array using recursion in C. So in this video, we're going to learn how to reverse an array in C using a recursive function. So the first thing we'll do is declare and initialize an int array with eight elements, the numbers from one to eight. We'll also declare and initialize an int variable length to the length of the array, which in this case is eight. Now, if we want to reverse the elements in this array, what we could do is swap the corresponding elements at either side of the array. So in other words, we could swap the first element with the last element. We would then have eight here and one here. We could then swap the second element with the second last element. We would then have seven here and two here. We could swap the third element with the third last element. We would then have six here and three here. And finally, we could swap the fourth element with the fourth last element. We would then have five here and four here, and the array would be reversed. So to actually implement this algorithm, we can keep track of a low index and a high index. The low index would initially be zero, the first element in the array. The high index would be the index of the last element in the array, which is going to be length minus one. In this case, eight minus one would give us seven. So the indexes of the elements in this array look like this, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So during the first step of the algorithm, we would swap this element here at the index seven with this element here at the index zero, and we would have one here and eight here. Then for the next step of the algorithm, we would increment low by one and decrement high by one. So low would then be one and high would then be six. Now during the next step of the algorithm, we would swap the elements at these indexes. We would swap seven here with two here. We would then have seven here and two here. Now again, for the next step of the algorithm, we would increment low by one and low would now be two. We would again decrement high by one and high would now be five. We would swap the elements at the indexes two and five. So we would swap six here with three here. Three would go here and six would go here. And again, for the next step of the algorithm, we would increment low by one and decrement high by one. And now we would swap the elements at the indexes three and four. So we would swap five with four here and four would go here and five would go here. And then for the next step of the algorithm, when we increment low by one, we'll get a low of four. And when we decrement high by one, we'll get a high of three. Because low is no longer less than high, at this point, we would know that we've reached the middle of the array. And we can now stop performing the swaps because the array will have been reversed. Let's actually implement this now using recursion. The first thing we'll do is declare a function. We'll call the function reverse. The function will have a void return type because the function doesn't actually need to return a value. The first parameter of the function will be the array itself. So we'll have int array. Now, because the function is using recursion, we're going to keep track of the low and high indexes using parameters. So we'll have int low and int high to keep track of the low and high indexes. So we can now copy this and provide an implementation of the function down here. Now the implementation itself is going to be a bit short. All we're really going to do is swap the elements at the low and high index. So we'll have int temp is equal to array at the index low. So here we're using what's called a temp variable to help us swap the elements in the array at the low and high indexes. We're going to store the value in the array at the low index into the temp variable. So that way we can overwrite the value in the array at the low index with the value in the array at the high index. Because we've stored the old value at the low index into the temp variable, we haven't lost that value. And we can set the element in the array at the high index to the value in the temp variable to complete the swap. So next, we'll overwrite the value in the array at the index low with the value in the array at the index high. And then finally, we'll set the value in the array at the index high to the value stored inside the temp variable, the old value in the array at the index low. And that will complete the swap. Now, when we first call the function in main, we're going to pass in the array and the low index is initially going to be set to zero, and the high index is initially going to be set to length minus one. 
just as when we conducted the algorithm by hand. So when the function is called, it's going to swap the first element in the array with the last element in the array. Now to solve the problem recursively, we want the function to call itself again. We'll increment low by one, and we'll decrement high by one to carry out the next step of the algorithm. So down here, we'll have reverse array with low plus one, and then high minus one. So the next time the function is called, the second element is going to be swapped with the second last element. And the next time it's called after that, the third element is going to be swapped with the third last element, and so on. And we want the algorithm to continue like this so long as the low index is less than the high index, because that tells us that we haven't yet reached the middle of the array. So we'll have here if low is less than high. And if the low index is less than the high index, we're going to continue. But when this is no longer the case, we're going to stop the algorithm. The function is not going to call itself again. So now, after calling the reverse function in our main function, let's output the array elements to confirm that they have been reversed. So up here, we'll have a for loop with a counter variable i that's going to be set to each array index. So we'll start i off at zero, and we'll continue the loop so long as i is less than the length of the array, and we'll increment i by one with each loop iteration. This will cause i to go from zero up until the length of the array, so we can output each element in the array. So we'll have printf percent d space to output an int value, and we'll output the element in the array at the index i. When this loop is done, we'll also output a couple new line characters as well. And if we save, compile, and run our program, we can see the array has been reversed because we had one to eight, and now we have eight to one. So the function is working. It might not be ideal that the programmer has to pass in the low index and the high index. It might be considered better if the programmer could just call a function and supply the array and the length of the array as arguments. We could do that if we created a wrapper function and the wrapper function would be given the array and the length of the array and the wrapper function would then call the reverse function with the correct low index and the correct high index. So up here, we'll have void reverse array for our wrapper function. It's going to accept the array as an argument as well as the length of the array. And the implementation of this function is going to be very simple. We're just going to call the reverse function with the array zero as the low index and length minus one as the high index. So we'll copy this and paste it down here. And then inside the function body, we'll call reverse with the array and zero as the low index and length minus one as the high index. And then in our main function, we could use this wrapper function. So we could call reverse array. And this time we only have to pass it the array and the length of the array. And we could say this is a better interface because it's simpler to use. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll get the same correct reversed array as before. So this is how we can reverse an array in C by using recursion. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.